everyone, I'm Dr. Danita, and welcome to Baggage Claims Unpack Your Bags with Dr. Danita. If you missed any of the episodes from season one or two, they're all uploaded on my YouTube channel, and this would be a good time to play catch up. While you're there, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. You can also follow me on Instagram and like my Facebook page. All of that information is below. Guess what? Season three is around the corner. And backed by popular demand, the topic is deal breakers. That's relationship deal breakers. And we're going to ask the question, do you know your breaking point? As a licensed marriage and family therapist, I work with many couples who I think should have broken a deal day one or should have never gotten into the deal. And then I work with some who are trying to break deals that are workable. And so we're going to talk about various topics um, that people may view as deal breakers and we'll ask the question, deal or no deal? Kids, deal or no deal? Addictions, deal or no deal? Or are all addictions equal? You have alcohol, drugs, gambling, food addictions, shopping addictions, porn addictions. And so deal or no deal? Submission. To submit or not to submit that is the question deal or no deal so you don't want to miss this season three deal breakers I'm looking forward to joining with you so go ahead and like and share with all of your family and friends and join me now baggage claim unpack your bags with dr. Danita Well, hello, 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 everyone. We are back. It is season three. Thank you so much for your patience. This technology, it's great when it's working, but when it's not working, it's a pain in the neck. And so we are so glad that you held on and waited for us. So if you're coming in and just joining us, please like and share, like and share. This is an episode you don't want anyone to miss. If you are a fan type, I'm a fan. If you're viewing for the first time, let us know where you are viewing from. And so we're in episode one, eight episodes this season, and I am so excited. I'm looking forward to all of the topics we ended. As I said in, in my um, uh, announcement video, we ended last season with deal breakers, and we just realized that we were only scratching the surface. And as a relation, as a marriage and family therapist and dealing with relationships all the time, this topic of deal breakers is one that I am so excited about. And so let's, before I go into um, sharing some other things, don't forget to like and share, and let's bring on our guest. I have with me in the studio, Karan Thompson. And he is in a committed relationship. And we have Tiffany Wilson. Tiffany is, hey, Tiffany. Tiffany is Hi. also in a committed relationship. And guess what? Karan and Tiffany are committed <laughs> in the relationship. <laughs> and then so we nice have, so. yeah. And then we have, uh, John and Kwaitra Bynum, 30, almost 30 years of marriage, that's commitment. Come on, that's commitment that deserves a hand clap mm -hmm. right there. Clap it up for John and Kwaitra. All right, all right. So thank you. Uh, we'll have uh, you all share a little bit about yourselves in a minute. So um, when we think about um, deal breakers, and um, calling it, um, let me see. Some people, um, when we think about deal breakers, some people are, you know, really healthy, and they can kind of determine what a, you know, what a healthy deal breaker is. Some people are real shallow, and they'll call it quits over anything. And I've just seen the gamut from zero to one hundred. On, on the uh, continuum of the types of decisions people make. 
as it relates to why they would call it quits, why they would hang in, should they hang in, should they not hang in. So we're going to um, bring on our guest and um, have you all share a little bit about yourselves and um, what you think about being on the show tonight. All right. All right. Um, I guess you were looking at me. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at you. Okay. Sir. Since we're in house. Um, well, y'all know I'm Quran. Uh, I guess we're talking about deal breakers, as you've heard. I got a lot of them. Um, I can't, I can't <laughs> lie. I got, like she just said, uh, like, like to discontinue talking to somebody over little things. Some things people may view as little things. Some people may view as big things. But for me, I'm a nip it in the butt kind of guy. So, like, <laughs> if I'm talking to somebody and I see my first thing that I consider as a red flag, I'm a nip it in the butt kind of guy. Let's just, just stop this right here. Because uh, it's no need to waste anybody's time. And, you know, things just get out of control when you ignore red flags. And then you get emotionally invested into some red flags. So I ask questions early and often. And many have been nipped upon in the butt along the way. And that just is what it is. But I'm glad that I did all the nipping. Because now I have um, found somebody. And we are <laughs> matriculating through this thing they call dating. And in a committed relationship. And it is complicated in today's generation. That's one thing that I can say. I'm glad we got the, the setup going the way we do to where we can <clears throat> learn from some experience, glean from some experience, and then they'll probably be surprised by some of the things we have to say about what goes on in these uh, 2021 streets under the age of 35. So, <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> All right. Welcome, Tiffany. Tiffany, Tiffany. Hi, guys. So my name is Tiffany. Hello, everyone. Um, this is my first time on the season, so I'm great, gladly to be here um, and talking about deal breakers, which is a big deal. Um, I take mine a little bit different, the approach. <laughs> um, when I do, when I, I mean, I am all for like nipping the red flags in the bud. However, I think when you communicate certain red flags to people and how they reciprocate or how they approach the situation could be like, okay, yeah, I'm out. No need to talk about it no more. But sometimes I think it's important to educate people. It's important for you to be able to, for other people to hear different perspectives. Maybe they never you know, um, view the situation how you view it. No one ever told them about it, so they need to learn. Um, but if they are open and willing for that perspective, then it's like, okay, we could work some things out. If not, you know, especially when it's harm for you or the other person, then yeah, no, you need to get out. But when you are able to communicate um, and figure out if this is right for me, if we can handle these red flags, if not, then yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm done. So that's kind of my perspective on yeah um viewing um deal breakers and moving forward in a relationship all right all right we're gonna have a good discussion tonight we got some healthy perspectives up in here come on q and john what you got to say well um hi everybody um hi. 30 years in <laughs> um the thought of a deal breaker was um, not a thought at 18 and 20, mm -hmm. um, which really changes the perspective of how you approach marriage um, because we were still trying to navigate life for ourselves and figuring out what that looked like. However, for us, we were in Christ. And so um our perspective back then 30 years ago um was you get married you serve the lord and you work through it mm -hmm. and that's that <laughs> and that's that and that's that <laughs> and um just to put out the disclaimer baggage claim is not a christian show but as a pastor, as a committed Christian for almost all of my life, a lot of the people that I am connected with are Christians. But again, Baggage Claim is not a Christian show. And tonight's topic, we are going to attempt to handle not just from a, uh, a faith uh, uh, perspective, but just general 
Tonight's topic is to submit or not to submit. We're about it's about to go down. Cause you know this topic of submission is a big one. Is it? It's a big one. And most people in America view it as like a cuss word. It's just not it's just not happening. Okay. Most Women in America view it as a cuss word. And so, yeah, uh, most people are going to uh, view submission and associated with religion. Um, not just Christianity, but the Jewish faith or, or a cultural thing, but it's just not really a big thing <laughs> in America. It's just not very well accepted and so um it catches a lot of flack this whole idea of of submission so let's get started what are we calling submission what what, what do you think the definition of submission is i'm gonna let pastor q and pastor pastor. John go first. <laughs> <laughs> they would know they would the definition may have looked like a lot of different things well, submission to me is a uh, uh, service, accountability, mutual respect, you know, to each other. That's what uh, submission is to me. That's the word right there, mutual right. respect. Right. 50-50, that's it. Okay. Can, can we start with the first question of the night? <laughs> let's, get it, let's get it rolling. So... Isn't that 50-50, right? Inside of that 50-50, because another, another cuss word or like a hot topic or a trending up topic is the term gender roles. Inside of that 50-50, where do y'all view gender roles inside of submission? And what You're do those... you skipping all the way down. Oh, my bad. Right? I'm, my bad. I'm, I'm, I'm going to let the host work. I'm going to let the host work. <laughs> Go ahead. I thought, my bad. It's an overview. I'm, I'm ready to get into it, though. We, before we get to that, like, why do you think it's so difficult to come to grips with this term in in our culture? Like, why, oh, me? Oh, yeah, anybody? Why is it so? Why difficult? do I think it's so difficult to come to grips with the word submission? I think traditionally, what it looks like has the definition of what it looks like traditionally versus the status of relationships today is not congruent anymore so it's like the it, and it's cultural which we'll get into that i'm sure there's somewhere in the questions where it, it is cultural um and we'll break into the differences of that but just in general i think in america as far as the the man's role in the house it has changed from what it traditionally looks like therefore the the younger woman is not so much um looking to be uh, looking to come to adhere to the word submission because what submission used to look like, it doesn't really look like that anymore as far as the whole entire picture, I feel like. Um, and that starts with the man, in my opinion. And in 2021, I think that what a man views as his role in the household has changed. Therefore, what women view as submission has changed or sort of dissipating altogether. Yeah, we got a comment here because who do we have to submit to? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not going to lie. I hear a lot of women, even women that I've seen on my timeline that would say something like something along the lines of them, they would not be willing to submit. Also would say something along the lines of women will naturally submit when there's something to submit to. Mm -hmm. And I believe that that's true. Like when you create a space of emotional safety, I think that, you know, I mean, I'm not sure you're, you're a professional, but a lot of times women need emotional safety quicker and a little bit more than a man does. A man can protect a woman emotionally um, in the world as, as, it, as it pertains to the household more so than the woman protects him emotionally when it comes to the world. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to a protection. And so I feel like maybe that's like one of the things mm. that we've lost an angle of when it comes to what do we have to submit to along with a, a slew of other things. Yeah, I, I got here. Nobody, no woman wants to give up their power. Oh, they, they're going that's, in. That, here they go. That, they're that's going something in. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll address in a bit as well. Anybody else want to weigh in there on uh, why is it so difficult? 
<laughs> don't don't wait yeah. on <laughs> No, in response to what Karan is saying, like I get it. Also, like a lot of people don't have healthy examples of what submission looks like in yeah. today's mm -hmm. society. So it's like, you know, you may have seen like your mother or your grandmother, your auntie or your sister submit to a man and maybe she's been hurt. And now you see like this is what it looks like when a woman submits. Like, how do I even navigate this in my relationship mm -hmm. today? Like if women don't feel um, if you're not receiving like consistency in a relationship, you're not going to submit to that. No dependency. You're not going to submit to that. Like no commitment. You're not going to submit to that. So there are levels to like um, what a woman receives in order to say like, OK, this is a man whom I'm able to submit to willingly because of what he's already given me and he's showing me. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And so keeping in line with that, this culture, this cancel culture of the Gen Zers, they trying to cancel this whole concept of submission so um 17 years ago destiny's child wrote that um oh. song cater to you <laughs> and the gen zers are not having it at all at all they're like they're classifying it as slate like women as slaves and you know when you hear you um what, what did they say um my life would be purposeless without you whatever your desire i'll supply you when you come home late, tap me on the shoulder. I'll roll over. Baby, I heard you. I'll serve you. They're not having it. They're not having Fantasia getting on um, what, what Fantasia was on um, on the Breakfast Club. And she was talking about, you know, let your man lead you. That's what's wrong with women today. Um, that's what's wrong with relationships. They won't let their man lead them. And then um, uh, Jenny Mai. Jenny Mai? Jenny Mai. She Jeannie said um, she's very um, dominant, you know, in her in her work and, and outside of the home. So when she gets home, she want her, wants her man to lead her. But for context clues, anybody who doesn't know who Jeannie Mai is, that's the wife of the rapper formerly known as Young Jeezy for any of my, my, uh, <laughs> my generation out there. <laughs> that's what she's talking about. But yeah, but but yeah. At any rate, nobody's having it, right. and they're giving them a lot of flack. So yeah. let's talk about it. I think the approach these days is is I don't think you can approach the conversation of submission the same these days, especially not as a man. It's way different. Um, which I have these conversations at the round table all the time, you know, uh, amongst friends because it's a hot topic. Um, but I don't think you can approach it how Fantasia just approached it anymore because I. You have a lot of women that might be listening to that that are dealing with a situation in which they aren't getting anything out of, like the things that Tiffany mentioned, out of their relationship to see something to submit to. So not only is it something you're just saying or you're asking for, but it's not even natural for her. You know what I'm saying? It's not, it's not natural for her to submit to what she's getting out of her relationship. Like it doesn't feel natural to submit to uncertainty. It doesn't feel natural to submit to what she feels is a lack of commitment. It doesn't feel natural to submit to what she feels is emotional unsafety. So she's not going to do it anyway. And then the generation is calling the cuss word anyway. So what her natural, in my opinion, her natural response would be like, you're right. Well, the other thing is most Gen Zers are not even married. So yeah. Yeah. That's that's not even <laughs> they got so much to say and they haven't even stepped into a real relationship yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Who else? Well, let me jump in because I'm going to come from the conceptual um, perspective of how God designed it. And I, um, I think it's important for us to recognize that um, the way in which God designed marriage and the way we read, re the way in which we view um, biblically um, God's design is very different. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, now we have multi um, religions and everybody's got their own perspective and everybody's adding and taking away. We need to understand that the whole concept of the, the man being the head of the household is a biblical concept. And so if you are not um, a believer and you're not 
um, rooted and understand how God designed marriage, it is going to be difficult for you to understand or even accept the concept of submission. I do agree that um, because the way in which men have led their homes um, down through the years, I agree with you, Tiffany, you know, that modeling piece is so significant. Um, because what we see is what we model and, and what we pass on. And so growing up, a lot of these Gen Zers, um, millennials, what they've seen in the home has shaped the way they view um, marriage and the institution of marriage. And so they say, I don't want it. Mm. Now, I can only speak for John and I and our family. My son is 31 years old. My son is married with a wife and two children. My son saw what a healthy marriage looked like. He saw a, a, a mother who was willing to submit to her husband as a mutual thing, but understanding that he is the head. And so as he's following Christ, I have no issues with following him. Was that always the case? There were times early in our marriage where we were still trying to navigate things because we were very young. And so um, it was very difficult. And so what I saw modeled in my home as I entered into my marriage was a controlling environment. And so it wasn't easy for me to submit. But it wasn't until I really understood and then he started to align with what God had for him to do for his family because he understood the value of being the man of the household and leading his children so his children could see what a healthy marriage looked like. Then we began to align. And so for, uh, for me as a wife, I have no problems with submitting because I know that my husband's not leading me into destruction. Right. And so it goes back to Quran's statement of being safe. It goes back to Quran's statement of being emotionally safe. Safe. I am emotionally safe with my husband. I'm physically safe with my husband. I'm spiritually safe with my husband. So I have no issues with submitting to his decisions. And even when we have the dialogue about the um, whatever decisions we need to make, I say to him, you run this ship. Mm -hmm. If the ship sinks, it's on you. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because now I, I have to know that he's following what's best, what God has given him for his family. So to go back to my son, I see how our modeling of what a healthy marriage looks like I see that now being modeled in my son and my daughter-in-law's life. Right. That doesn't mean I gave up my identity. I am still quite each of the life coach. I am still quite each of the pastor. I am still quite each of the helper. I'm still quite each of the one with goals and dreams. And that mutual respect kicks in because he's like, I know what God has called you to do. So oh, that's my yeah. take on that part. Uh, I, so I, so stay, staying right there, right? I have a quick question. Well, not a quick question. I, I want to flip it a little bit, right? So you said it's going to be hard for the for the quote unquote unbeliever to mm -hmm. to come under submission or, or agree with the concept of submission. But in what you've seen inside of submission, how would you break it down for some? Because there are people who will cut you off right at the door if you tell them that that's why you believe in submission because you believe in God. They're like, well, right. I'm out of here. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't believe in God, so why would I believe in submission? So what would you say to that person but before trying to obviously witness? Like, what would you what would you say to them? I would say that, first of all, it, it starts with mutual respect. Right. Right? It starts there. If if we're if we're in a relationship, if we're if we're dating and we're in relationship and we have the same goals, and again, it goes back to recognizing those red flags. It goes back to your own individual emotional health, right? And so, when you're in a relationship, single or you know whatever the case, or dating or or, or whatever you all are doing, um, it goes back to how do I hold myself accountable in this relationship? Because if I'm called to be submissive, 
what will that look like? And so it looks like me having respect. Now let's be let's let's be real with it. Men want to be respected. Women want Whether to be they're nurtured. Christians or not, right? Whether, Whether they're, they're Christians Christian or, not. or not. And didn't you say that's one of the number one? Like when you when you ask people in, in marriage counseling what they want, the men men, want number one they want to be respected. And the women <laughs> want to be nurtured. They right. want to feel safe. They want to feel safe. And so if you can create an environment for me that makes me feel safe emotionally, physically, spiritually then why would it be an issue for me to be submissive? To be honest with you, I know Jenny, I mean, I know of her from the real. Um, I have no, I, I agree with her. I don't want to have to be the lead all the time. When I'm out pursuing what God has given me, I need to be uh, assertive. I need to be confident in what God has given me. But I don't want to have to come home and be the same way that I am with the world with my husband, I right. want to know that he's going to take, take the lead. Right. So it sounds like you're saying it's more of a natural thing, whether you're a Christian or not a Christian. Yeah, Christian it's more of a, a it's more of a na natural thing that a woman um, wants to feel protected and wants to feel Absolutely. nurtured and wants to, and it doesn't really have anything. It, it doesn't have to have anything to do with it being Maybe. a biblical uh, perspective. Yeah. I look at I look I look at my uh, um, my grandparents for instance, um, and uh, my grandfather he just took care of his family. My grandma never worked a day in her life. You know, we talking years ago now, and um, they wasn't in they wasn't in the church. They wasn't saved. This is my mom, mom and dad, and everything. But I see how my grandma took it, held everything down while my grandfather went to work, and and they had nine kids. And I always said, you know, when I was young, I always said, wow, my grandfather really took care of my grandma. So that right there, I guess, you know, my dad took care of my mom up until they divorced. But I always looked at my grandfather as well. He took care of his family. So I, that is, he instilled that in me to take care of my family. So my wife, she know I, I hold everything down. She the, she the, she the vocal. <laughs> but I hold it down. Just put it that way. So she, she have no reason submitting her to me, and I have no reason submitting to her. I mean, it's 50 50 to me. That's how I look at it. Yeah. So you said your grandfather took care of your grandmother, and um, and she didn't have to work. So there's a comment here. Let's talk about all the women who are working and self-sufficient or working and they don't get to stay home. So their thoughts are, do I need to submit if I'm out doing the same thing you're doing? Yes, I agree. I agree. I agree. I mean, because my, I look at my wife works, <laughs> I work. And, you know, like I said, I'm the man of the family, <laughs> but he still submits and I still submit. So like I said, it's a 50, 50, it's not, uh, 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 70, 30 or 60, 40 is 50, 50. That's how I look at it with submitting, you know, um, she know that I'm going to take care of this house and family. And I know she's going to take care of me and, and I'm fine with that. And we both work, we both get out here and we've been working from day one to try to take care of this family of ours and, and, and God been blessing us. Right. Tiffany, how you feel about it? The working part, the working aspect, the and working bringing part. money into the house and things of that nature, and going fifty I, fifty. Yeah, I mean, I think in that aspect, I feel like submission creates structure in the household. Even if you're out on your grind, he's out on his grind, out you know in the outside world. But it's it shouldn't like divide. You know, like, okay, if I'm out working, you're out working, like, why do I have to come home? And sub I, I don't really subscribe to that idea because I feel like submission creates structure in the household. And then that way we come together with, you know, our finances, your finances or whatever we got going on. That creates the opportunity for you guys to just build and build and build while both of you guys are out on your ground. Like it, it to me, I, I don't subscribe to that personally. Um, I just feel like it creates structure. And it 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 shouldn't be um, division in that aspect. 
So you do subscribe to 50-50 as far as the submission, as far as what it looks like. It's just the way you're explaining it. It's, it's still 50-50 the way you go in with it as far as the concept of submission. Yeah, I, yeah. It sounds like you are um, saying something like, uh, like an organizational structure. I always say to couples, when you come to the point of a final decision that has to be made, and you're at a stalemate. You can't seem to uh, come to an agreement. Somebody has to has to be responsible right. for the final decision. So I'm thinking like even in an organization, a good manager or a good CEO or whatever will bring the team together and have, you know, dialogue and, you know, what do you think and, and you know, and, and get all of the um, thoughts out on the table. But then in the end, he has to make a final decision for the good of the company, right? And so that's the way I view uh, a man's role that uh, a, a man who has come where we have talked about the vision, we have talked about, you know, the goals and, and what the uh, marriage is going to look like and what we're doing, you know, to move it forward. We, we talk, uh, he utilizes my strengths and he, and, and he utilizes his strengths. And it's not just like me, me, uh, what is it? Uh, I'm Tarzan and you're Jane. It's not that. Are y'all too young for that? Uh, no, no. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they too young for that. It's they not too young for that. Jane kind of situation <laughs> that you know that we mutually have input when it comes to okay, a final decision has to be made. Then right. you're going to trust that the man is going to make this decision mm -hmm. based on what is for the good of the family because that's the way we've been rolling, right? Right. right. Um, and sometimes, yeah. Oh, uh, go to Tiffany. Sorry. No, and I was gonna say, like, that's a lot of pressure on a man to make a decision, especially if it's something where it's like our our family is in, you know, some kind of like struggle or like our household needs like something with the house. Like, any, I feel like having that responsibility is hard on a man. And you're looking to him like, well, you're the leader, so you make the decision, but I'm trusting that you make the best one, despite, you know, everything that we discussed. It's a lot of pressure on that person. So even though the idea of submission in, in today's society is like, you know, it's giving the man all that he needs and looking at him as just this hierarchy of just, you know, the leader of the family, like that's a lot of pressure on him because he knows he has to make the best decision in anything that you guys decide to do. Yeah, I think the I think the the um, real uh, the greater challenge in any relationship is when you don't have healthy people yeah. making decisions. Hundred percent. That's what we're talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. right now we're talking we're talking about you're in a healthy relationship and or healthy marriage, and you know the the decisions are being made. But I work with a lot of people where. The relationships are not as healthy and the women are very mistrusting of not that they don't think their husband loves them, but they just don't think that he can make really good sound decisions right. because he's not a healthy right. individual. So that's a, a significant issue there that why premarital counseling is necessary. Necessary. Find that out that he's not healthy in premarital counseling. And if you decide to marry him after you found out that he was not healthy, then you're going to deal with the rest, right? right. That's right. That's right. right. <laughs> so let me say, me and Tiffany both go to therapy separately. Um, and with that, I think one thing that we do very well, which we always say that we highlight for ourselves, is that we communicate. So in what, communicate well on a, on a high frequency. So what mom was saying, like as far as what the submission looks like or what, you know, positive submission looks like, I think in the when when people talk about it, the the the, the distortion, just like Tiffany was saying, of the man gets to make all the decisions. That's not really all that fun when you when the rubber meets the road. Like you know what I'm saying? Like when but you know the way it's been changed is like oh he so he gets to say what happens and what doesn't happen. But that's not really that fun. But the 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 balance of it is when you have the mutual respect, like like um um 
I'm gonna call you Pastor Q. Pastor Q and Pop John and, and Pop John are saying um, is that when you have the mutual respect, I respect what she does well. So there are some things where we already know before I make the call what the call is gonna be because right. we're just moving together. And I know that this is her area anyway. Just like she was saying, like running a company, though the decision may come out of my mouth, I have somebody standing right next to me that has helped build this company just as just as much as I did. And, and a good leader will acknowledge those things every chance they get. I would we wouldn't be here without the people that we have in place. My wife, you know what I'm saying, my girlfriend. We would these are some of the these are some of the highlights of the things along the way that, that she's made the call. Y'all don't even know she put this in the words. And and those are the ways that you keep submission running cool because she doesn't feel like she's being left out or, or I'm just making decisions over her head. We're balancing each other's talents is the way I would look to 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 uphold a, a household that's run mm -hmm. under the term of submission. But all that comes from getting emotionally healthy and getting into those conversations with your with the that person part. with people. You gotta get there with them in order to start running smoothly like that and 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 um you know get that type of what do you call it um chemistry going you know what i'm saying that that even flow like it's a three man weave for my basketball player well two man weave you know what i'm saying like you just moving up and down the court now like cuz you you know what she's good at she knows what i'm good at she knows she doesn't have to worry about this i know i don't have to worry about when people come to me with this because i can ask her she's good and she's good at that you know what i'm saying and and we go from there I think I'm, I, I said something. I seen Pop John put his arm around her. He's like, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's I, just want, I just wanted to add one thing to that. And, and, and as far as like that works for us, we both want the same thing. So, that, you know, yes, that, part. That, that part right there helps, you know, with the, with the roles we play. You right. know, we always wanted nice things. So my wife was like, John, you make the decision on that. Should we get it or not? And I'm like, uh, no, nah, no, nah, it's not the right time, honey, but we eventually get it. So that's all playing a part in the submission and, and me making some calls, you know, but we both want the same thing. So that's how right. help, that helps. And that's, and this, we always had a healthy relationship. Now, when we first got married, we didn't have a healthy relationship. <laughs> yeah, no. I know about that. But well, as we got older and mature and, you know, our kids is growing up, that's when a healthy relationship, be, you know, we start doing our thing. But my wife, I guess I shouldn't say that, but she was more mature than I was, even though she was younger. Because, I mean, most men are young and dumb when we're young. But <laughs> <laughs> either here, but as I got older and, and know what we wanted and wanted and, and know what I want, excuse me, I stutter and everything, y'all, but know what I wanted and wanted for my family, everything worked out fine. Yeah. Right. And and yeah. that, that whole... Um young and dumb thing I say over and over and over again I cannot encourage young adults enough to make sure that you're not making the young and dumb mis mistakes right make I agree. sure that you are mature enough to handle and again premarital counseling there's a question in there about pre-dating counseling uh, pre-dating counseling or or counseling premarital counseling why you're dating I, I don't know what I, I can't remember what the question is but I do encourage before you put that ring on, most people come to me after they put the ring on and then say, okay, let's get premarital counseling. Nobody don't want to give that ring back if it's not going to work. <laughs> so it's better to come to counseling before you put the ring on so that if you find out that this is not the right time and we still need, you know, work, we still, we haven't put a deposit on a venue so we don't have to move forward with this, that's best. I can promise you that that's best. This is a lifetime commitment that is being made. There's another, um, there's a, several comments about um, finances and, and it's more about, it's more than just bringing a paycheck to the table. We're going to save that for gold digger, gold or gold digger. All right. Yeah. Cause we, we got an episode about that. And so, all about um, money. yeah, yeah. All about that. But it ties into submission to me. I mean, as it far does. as what it looks like today versus what it used to look like. All right, you want to touch it? No. Um. Yes. No. Well. Well, I will okay. say this. Can I? Can I say this? Yeah. yeah. Um. When we got when when we said I do, we had nothing. <laughs> yeah, and it's different if you say I do with stuff. Right, yeah. and so right. it is not about the money. Right now, of course, you want someone that's going to provide for you and be able to sustain the family. But it's so much more than just 
bringing a, a, a paycheck home, you know, being nurturing, uh, having conversations about my day or or being attentive to listening to how his day it, his day was is just as important leading out when we are out and about and the whole protective piece it's so it's a it's a, a it's a it's it encompasses so many things but again i can't stress enough the importance of again addressing those issues in premarital counseling, but that emotional health piece, right. whether you're a Christian, whether you're an atheist, whether you're a Buddhist, whether you're Hindu, is everything. Because if you're emotionally bankrupt, you have nothing to give. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I agree. So and, uh, th there's, there's still some comments in here um, that um, that like are about patriarchy and male dominance and traditional gender roles like right. Karan was um, talking about earlier, um, feminism and, you know, are the women just um, staying because they, or the women of old, were they just staying because they were being taken care of and what? I'm just reading yeah. comments. I'm, okay. No, I'm, I'm listening. I'm just reading comments. You yeah, want to well, yeah, I'm, oh. yeah. I'm just, I'm just throwing stuff out there. Um, y'all nigga, because y'all know I got a lot to say. I'll be saying stuff. Just say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I mean, I'm reading a comment here. It says, I'll read the entire comment. We have no idea what submission looks like because of the lack of equality in traditional relationships. When survival is based on submission, then it's not real. I think women of old see if they have. See, if they had the ability to survive as a single woman, they would have. Um, I think that's debatable. Uh, I don't think any woman wants to survive alone. I think companionship is natural, first and foremost. Mm. Um, I think everybody wants to be with somebody. I, I don't think that women would just choose to be alone if they saw that they could do it by themselves. I think that that's, um, I think that that's a little bit of pressure that the systems have placed in there for us. Um, and let's just talk about naturally. I understand that, you know, I'm about to take it left a little bit. Other than having weapons, right? Let's break it down to the very natural part of men and women. I tell, this is how I break it down to people who are non-believers all the time. Um, and it's not so much about submission, but just about gender roles in general. If we're walking up the street, right? And uh, we have our two month old baby and a wild ranging pit bull just runs up to us. What is the order of operation when that happens? <laughs> Seriously, let's just break it down. Am I supposed to look at my wife like, jump in front of that dog? Is no. that ever gonna happen ever in life? No. So that's why I, I disagree with the whole woman would operate single if they had to. Yeah, if you're on the street and your husband's not with you and a pit bull run up, you're going to have to survive on your own. But naturally, when you're with your husband, you would think naturally he's going to jump in front of that pit bull. Along all the, all the way down to them, I say it's all women, but I've never met one that doesn't want their husband to kill a spider for them. Okay, like it's a spider. But that's just natural. We're not scared of spiders. Women are. Right. Like, that's just, right. If you want to open the door for yourself your whole life and kill all the spiders and, and block and, 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 you know what I'm saying, if you can rob, and, you know what I'm saying, if you want to create gender equality in that sense, then I don't, I don't understand the meaning. I don't, I don't think that that is possible, but that's what we're talking about when we say, when, when we try to implement some of the things that we say, they come with that too. Okay. So if we get robbed, then we both get robbed. I ain't about this. You get robbed too. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's how you, that's how I would look at it if you don't want me to be the man. But you, you know what I'm saying? So you gotta want me to be the man, but it comes with a lot. It comes with everything. Yeah, and I think to, um, uh, to what Quran is saying, a lot of things are just natural, and it really doesn't right. have a lot of uh, anything to do with Christianity or faith. Because I'm just thinking, just natural things in terms of women. Um, we tend to be nurturers of our children. So if we were about to get into a car accident, and I and I have or, or just stopping short right my husband would automatically put his hand out as a, right to like to shield me if we're stopping short if i was driving and we're that. stopping short i don't think to do that <laughs> it's just not but if my child yeah. is in the seat next to me the first thing i'm gonna do is put my hand there to make sure that they are safe. So this order, I, I didn't, it wasn't like talk to me like that. It just is, natural. it is a natural thing. And so I think when we do present it that way, sometimes it may be easier to 
digest for you know the the non Christian world. So <laughs> I think I think the same exact thing. I'm just reading through these comments because they're they're getting funny. Uh, I, I I encourage you guys to read through them too. <laughs> somebody, somebody said that's not true. A lot of men are, are scared of spiders too. If we go, go with nah, no, nah, I don't know no I, man. I scared of spiders. Man is scared <laughs> no, I don't know who man is scared of spiders. Scared of spider. Are you gonna run with Pastor Q, or are you still gonna kill the spider? Even though you scared, she can't see that you scared, right? You still gonna kill it. She don't know I'm scared of this spider. I gotta stomp on it. Right, that's right. I ain't gonna change the fact I'm gonna kill it. <laughs> but yeah, I, I hear you. <laughs> Yeah, and, and uh, yeah, there's a comment. Men also know that we wouldn't live long factually without y'all. So, yeah, yeah. 100%. Well, that's, that's statistics. Yeah, Men I live agree. longer, they, they have um, a, a longer lifespan um, being married than they do being single. Yeah. Yeah. Look, yeah. I ain't been this healthy since I. <laughs> she has put me on smoothies in the morning. <laughs> Round of a good face. woman, Ron. Round of a good woman. Yeah. I'm here to help. I'm here to help. That's right. <laughs> uh, your sister said you don't really like bugs, but you're gonna get the job done. That's what I'm saying. I don't like look. <laughs> I'm telling you. So, so do you think that this submission thing cancels out the woman's right to agency? Like, I mean, we've been talking, Q, you said that, you know, you still have goals, you still have dreams, you still have, you know, you, the choices that you make. But this whole feminism thing, it, they really do push that women's agency, their own, uh, you know, ability to be themselves or, you know, all of that gets pushed to the side due to submission. I have to disagree. And again, again, I, 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 I will not overgeneralize my statement because I'm only speaking from my perspective. And so um, let that be noted in the chat that I'm speaking from my perspective. Um, but um, I've never been stifled in pursuing any of my dreams and still was able to submit. Um, I am very successful in my own right. I am successful as a wife. I'm successful as a mother. I'm successful as an entrepreneur. I, I get the opportunity to be the best version of me possible. Why? Because when I'm out there being the best version of me as possible, when I come home, I find safety. Mm -hmm. I find peace. I know that when I go out and I'm pursuing what God has called me to do, I know I have a husband that's praying for me. I have a husband that's not jealous and wondering, where are you or questioning? So again, I can only speak for me, but I don't feel as though a woman has to give up their identity. We are individuals when we come together. Mm -hmm. So just because we come together in union, doesn't mean that we have to lose ourselves. What we do now is make a new version of what we are together, even in our individuality. I agree. Mm -hmm. You know when it gets silent after you say something, you drop a, 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 little, a little bomb, a little <laughs> That's good. Yeah. But um, so you're talking about coming home to safety and coming home to peace after you've done your thing, you know, it, out there in the world. What about the women who say, well, I still got to come home and play the male's role? What do you mean by that? So <laughs> they, I, <laughs> There are women and yes. in, in marriage yes. who mm -hmm. still have to come home and oh you mean oh like on a daily like I, I elaborate because you married not me. <laughs> well I mean I, I talk to a lot of married people, that's what I do. Right. And so um men that don't live up to right the their role their role abilities, the role of, of what we're we're saying a man will do. So is submission canceled out? Cause I gotta run the show here. Well, 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 <laughs> well, 
there's, there's that's a twofold response. Yeah. From a biblical perspective, it says that if um, the, the man is supposed to um, love his wife as he loves the church, right. Right? right? And so leading from that place, if he's not leading from that place, it is going to be difficult for a, a, a believer or a non-believer. And then from a non-believer's perspective, why do I even need a man if you're not going to lead me? And that old saying, I could do bad all by myself. It's true. It's true. <laughs> it's true. Um, no woman wants to be alone. If a woman says, I want to be alone, um, I would have to question that because we weren't designed that way. Mm -hmm. so now, you have question, we, you would question her emotional health if she says, Absolutely. Not. Absolutely. Um, no one, no one, period, woman, female, wants to be alone. That's just not how God designed us. He designed us to be in relationship. However, situations and circumstances has forced women into roles that they didn't, they didn't agree to. So naturally, the natural thing to do is to step into that role. Right. So in a marriage, if the man is not doing what he's supposed to do, it, it it does make sense for a woman to make sure that the that the, the family is moving forward, whether the husband is doing it or not. Unfortunately, now what I would say to that individual is that you need to get some counseling because right. you need to be able to work through that and figure out where the barriers are and figure out if this is what you are called to do in this relationship. I'm no proponent for divorce, but but. We are to submit as the husband submit unto the Lord. Right. Now, if he's not submitting unto the Lord, then I say you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> let, me, let me throw in a popping question. This, this question is for Tiffany. Tiffany, like being not married, right? Mm -hmm. What would be, because I feel like a lot of our, a lot of the people we look at or look up to got married young. So some of the, not some, almost all the things they found out in marriage, they found out about marriage, they found out while in marriage. So mm -hmm. most of the situations were in the situation when you were finding out how to get through the situation. In having been single as long as we've been single, what do you feel like are, what do you feel like are the characteristic, characteristic traits that you would look for that lead you to believe you wouldn't have to play that role when you come home? Before you even married. Before married, um, I feel like in regards to communication, if I'm expressing to you my needs or my expectation of what I feel like a good man is and a good man where, where he, who's able to lead and, and, and I'm able to submit, um, if you respect that, then that's awesome. If you can um, adhere to, you know, my to my desires and to my wants. And if we sit down together and talk about our core values, I think that's key too, is actually sitting down and discussing your core values and mine. And we're able to come together and say like, wow, this is aligned to what I believe in and to what I adhere to. Then I think that that's something that's, it, 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 it motivates you and encourages you to know that, okay, if I'm put in a, in a relationship and this is my duty, or um, my will to submit, then I'm yeah, the word duty because I have the man. <laughs> Say it again. I said the word duty. That's a cuss word. I know. Too. That's why I said my. Yeah. No. 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 I canceled it until like this is my will <laughs> to do. Yeah, I'm willing to. <laughs> I was reading um, another comment. Were you talking about submission and dating? Is that what you? No, oh, no, 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 I didn't say that. Okay. I, nope, that's, yeah, nope, missed, nope, won't I go missed, there. I <laughs> nope, never said that. <laughs> Don't put that on me. <laughs> um, uh, the, the, the comment was that um, there was a thought that we're trivializing the point about um, women submitting for survival's sake. I don't think a woman should submit for survival's sake. I think that women should submit out of choice. Because it's, um, you know, because it's a mutual be a decision, because they see that we have 
um, you know, talked about what this family is going to look like. And we've talked about mutual goals and we've talked about where we want to go in the direction of our family. So let's come and submit under that. I don't think that women should submit because they're trying to survive. And today women are doing their thing. So we're not mm -hmm. in that whole survival mode anymore. Um, a lot of women are making more money than their husbands. So mm -hmm. when, when they submit, they're submitting because it's a choice. Mm -hmm. I think, right? Right. I, I, agree. I, I agree. Um, I guess that comment that you're reading up, I'm I'm reading through it, and it's basically saying that we've been we've been trained up, or you know, kind of caught up to be, to believe that the woman couldn't survive. What it says here is through how uh, how we develop as humans. So oh, nature versus yeah, nature, nature yeah, yeah. versus nurture. So basically, if there were, I guess I'm not trying to read what this person is saying, but if there never was any relationship that Thank women you. would grow to protect themselves anyway, they would grow like men. Uh, I, I, I mean, it's an opinion, you know. I, mm. I respectfully disagree, but it's an opinion. We're open for opinions. <laughs> but yeah, I just didn't want to misquote the comment. I didn't want to like, I, I wanted to give that person the opportunity to um, to have their, their, their open word or their say. Yeah. But but what about the submission thing during dating? Like when does submission actually when you start, start practicing? Yeah. Well, I don't know how you know America trained us up or how uh, you know how <laughs> naturalization or you know what what do they call that um, when humans evolve evolution? I don't know how that came about, but I can tell you inside of our relationship, me and Tiffany's relationship, she doesn't. I. We, we have talked about submission. I've never asked for or anything, but there are things that in growing with each other, she has naturally come to look to me to look for answers. And she takes my answers seriously. Um, that doesn't mean she's adhering to my final say, but she already does take my opinion very serious. And she takes, and she also looks to me for comfort and emotional safety, naturally. Like I don't, she naturally makes me feel emotionally safe. But I don't look to her for emotional safety. She naturally looks to me for emotional safety at times when she's going through it. My natural reaction is to go through it on my own because I'm a man and that's I, however we want to figure out how I got there or how we got there as men is I'm here. That's what I do <laughs> as a man. I naturally feel like I can handle things on my own, but naturally she's a nurturer and she doesn't force her way. She's just tactical. She just knows how to, how to get to a man. You know what I'm saying? Because that's the way that she was built but naturally when we have that relationship she comes to me for comfort she comes to me for emotional safety she comes to me to ask how i feel about this she comes to me to ask how i feel about that and when you're in tune with each other and you have chemistry she trusts my answer and that comes with practice and balance and we butt heads and all that stuff um inside our relationship so i wouldn't call it submission because we haven't put a ring on our thing on, on any fingers but it's definitely like practice and it's not a forced practice it's just natural when i, I believe i'm a manly man you know what I'm saying? There are things that I still have to put in order in order to call this, you know, make the next step happen. But those are things that I will put in place in order to run my household. I want to run my household. Um, and that can even dive into some of the points that I saw in the comments. I'll touch on it because I saw some of the younger women talking about finances. I believe that, that you know, Tiffany at some point is going to be a boss. I believe that at some point, I don't, I'm not, I don't necessarily desire to be a boss, but I necessarily des desire to be financially savvy. Um, she knows that already. So I want to turn a lot of a little bit of money into a lot of money. But one thing that I desire for my relationship is for the household standards as far as finances coming into the house can be ran through my finances alone. Whether she wants, to, whether she goes out there and makes a million dollars or twenty thousand dollars, she knows that if it's all gone. And one day, everything that's at the house is still going to be ran without a hitch. That's my desire for the house, for the structure of how I want to run my family. It's how I saw my house, my household ran for a long time. My mom was out there figuring out what she wanted to do, and my dad was just working. But if she had to quit her job, she could quit tomorrow. That's just how it worked. I can't because I'm. That's how I align my household. And so, however y'all want to do it, for the women that feel comfortable. Or, or want to know what submission looks like or what the response what the responsibility of a man in submission looks like in, in today's culture or traditionally that's what I'm talking about when I'm when I'm saying you know the balance and the 50 50 it's 50 50 she can make as much money as she wants to but if she if there comes a time where she wants to stay at home with the kid for two years 
I'm not going to be like, you, I, I, I don't feel comfortable saying, well, I need you to stay at work. I would never feel comfortable doing that. So, I mean, when when talking about submission, I feel like I can stand on it wholeheartedly because of the way that I believe in it. I got the golden silence. I think, that, I think, that, I think, <laughs> I think you said a lot there, Karan. You said a whole lot because as, as, as men, we want to make sure that our family is taken care of. And that's our first, that's priority. our first priority is to make sure our family is taken care of. And I guess, you know, your, your woman or your wife or your girlfriend or, you know, whoever, a significant other will see, well, this man is doing what they have, he have to do. And this is what my wife was saying earlier. She seen, you know, how I was handling my business and making sure the house was ran and everything. The kids was taken care of and my wife was taken care of. So that's why she had no problem or no, you know, submitting to me. So, and that's saying, you seen your mom and dad go through it. Your, your dad was handling his business, taking care of the household. So your mom had no problem submitting to your, your dad. So right. you on the right track, brother. Really, you are. <laughs> you on the right track. I also think it's important um, for, for, for it to be stated that every marriage is designed differently. Right. And so the mission that God is, would give um, one marriage is going to look very different for another um, marriage with the same goal in mind to advance the family, to enhance the unit, to, 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 to leave legacy um, for generations to come, religious or not. Um, that's the goal. You know, we, we, we develop our families so that our, our children will have something and that they pass on to their children. And so, you know, let's not you know, let's let's be mindful that, you know, what works for one group, um, one couple or, you know, another couple it is going to look different. OK. And so understanding that that's going to look different when you're dating and you're in that relationship. It's important. Tiffany touched on it. She taught she touched on vision. She touched on mission and in the dating phase. What is our vision for this marriage? What, what, what do we expect to get out of this marriage? What are we willing to give for this marriage? What are we willing to sacrifice for this marriage? And I think we've become, we've become a, a very selfless, a, a selfish um, society. We want what we want. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with you wanting if you're by yourself. And then don't complain that you're by yourself, but yet you're struggling. Don't, you know, but in a, a relationship, what is it that we want out of this relationship? It can't be for the moment. Right. But if you're immature, emotionally, you're not thinking about the next five years. You're thinking about the next five minutes. What can I get from her? What can I get from him? How much money can I get out of him in the right. next five minutes? What? How much sex can I get from her? You're not looking five years down the road. What road? What will this look like for us if we're dating? And it's important that you, you know, when you begin to date and, and you're in a relationship is to on those date nights, talk about what what is our vision and mission for this relationship? Yeah. And if they're not talking the same language, red flag, wave the flag and block. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, when you were talking, Q, about, um, you know, people just wanting to know what they can get in the next five minutes, we call that in counseling, we call that being in a relationship where there's objectification, uh, objectifying. So you're really just looking at each other as objects to meet your need. Right, and right. that's not what relationship yeah. is all about. Right. And again, if these conversations are not had in premarital counseling, it's a recipe yeah. for disaster. Disaster. Right. All you're going to have is a constant um, uh, uh, cycle of frustration because there's yeah. no real uh, purpose, no real goal to look forward to. You're just kind of spinning your wheels every day, just going to a job, paying bills, and, and there's no like nothing to really look forward to as a union. 
And so those are real critical conversations to have um, absolutely prior to marriage. And again, that's why I'm always putting the plug in for premarital counseling. That should happen happen before you put the ring on the finger. Not should. That's that it's a, that's actually a deal breaker for me. So plug that. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not if you're not willing to go to premarital counseling, that's a deal breaker. We're not doing it. So, um, we are coming close to the end, and um, what suggestions? This is episode there applies else? to part two. That's the first <laughs> thing. <laughs> there was a question that I don't know if we even, because that could take us another 30 minutes. <laughs> what? <laughs> there, there was, there, yeah, don't even go there. <laughs> but now you got to read it now. What was it? It feels like it's going back a little bit, but... Um, I had read about this community of um, married people, um, and they call the community a domestic discipline society. Mm. <laughs> All right, maybe you should. Maybe I should, right? In the domestic discipline society, the husband is considered the dominant, and the wife is considered the sub. And Short in for this, submissive. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's not the bondage thing. They they they're very they're just, very just clear sure. with that. It's not that bondage thing going on. Sweet but they, they it's it's a H O H situation. A head of household. Head of household. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. And but the thing <laughs> is, the the dominant gets to lay down the rules of what this household looks like. And it's not a, um, it's not a coming together. Yeah, yeah. But he lay, he lays down the rules, and the <laughs> sub follows the rules. But there are consequences for not following the rules. Yeah, and those consequences come in the form of spankings. What? Are you, okay. So anyway, that is plan. Submission part two may be coming. <laughs> I don't even know where we just went with this. <laughs> It's real though. It's a whole community. Uh, I I hear you. We gonna put that one in the box. Is this, this in the Western civilization? <laughs> so we'll say that for part two. Yeah, but anyway, that uh, wasn't our idea of submission. That was just something that I was. But this is the kind of stuff that, that causes people, people to say. Right. This is why I brought it up. That's what causes people to say, mm, "I'm out." The submission thing is, yeah, not for me. Because this is what gets uh, publicized. The whole, you know, control yeah. thing. And women in the kitchen, barefoot and pregnant. That, that's not even a thing today. Not <laughs> like that. <laughs> not, like, not like that. But I mean, for a man to come home and see, you know, see his wife pregnant. But I, I've heard that your wife pregnant is one of the most beautiful things you can see. I, um, okay. So she still feels the, like I'm the that's I'm saying see. the whole concept of barefoot and pregnant. Oh, yeah. No. I get yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. But we take the concept and then we're like completely against the actual visual of it. But that, I mean, that's not terrible to see. I wouldn't think so. Tiffany, would you cook pregnant? What I was? She I said, would you cook pregnant? I mean, that's what cook I'm saying. So no problem with it. I didn't say she wouldn't cook pregnant. I'm saying the concept of barefoot and pregnant, keep them in the kitchen, keep uh, them pregnant. Yeah. 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 See, that's an old school term, Karan. Yeah. So you know, that's way back in the day. You know, that was an old school term, barefoot and pregnant. So. Uh, well, yeah. Like my grandma was different. barefoot and pregnant. She had nine kids. Oh, she so was barefoot she was and pregnant, pregnant yes. every year. <laughs> she was barefoot and pregnant. <laughs> All right. So, um, what suggestions? would you have um there are some people that are still feeling that this submission thing would not be a thing if it wasn't a religious thing um i do happen to know um i mean because i counsel a lot of couples as a marriage and family therapist that's what i do and have been doing for a lot of years i do know that there are couples who are not christians who are okay with the, the concept of submission. I haven't really thought about it in terms of age. Um, and so that's something that I'll have to sit and think. Are they only my older couples that are okay with submission and it's not a religious reason right. as to why um, they're submitting? 
But I do know people who are okay with the concept of submission because they came to understand that, you know, it's it's not about subservience. It's not about, you know, um, barefoot and pregnant concepts. Yeah. So. I'm seeing comments for part twos and bring the Gen Zs on. They want to be... <laughs> They want to get the 25 and unders. We're the 35 and unders. Me and Tiffany are the 35 and unders. They want to get the 25 and unders in there. I believe that's Gen Z. I'm not sure. Yeah. But uh, I'm all for it. I'm out of here for that one, though. I'm not out. I, I missed that boat by a couple years and completely missed it. <laughs> so so what kind of suggestions would you have um, for couples preparing for marriage um, and it, advice on this topic and not just advice from a necessarily a Christian perspective, but you know, what, what, what will we say? Who first me? Work on your own emotional health. Start there. I think when we are in it as an individual are emotionally healthy, our perspective, our mindset is very different. When we're emotionally bankrupt, we come to a relationship with that bankruptcy. And we come with the, you know, what we've seen and what we've experienced and the baggage that we claim. Work on your own emotional health. Then when you connect with someone, go to premarital counseling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't, you know, you know, um, what is it? Monopoly. They tell you don't pass go. I mean, don't, yeah, don't pass go. You don't collect $200. Don't pass premarital counseling mm. because in premarital counseling, it's going to challenge you in areas that you're not thinking about. And when you're dating, all you see is the hearts and the eyes. All you see is the shape. All you see is what he can do. All you, 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 you're so in the fog that you're not thinking about how will we raise the children? How will we discipline the children? What school systems will our children go to? Where will we spend holidays? All these things that will arise in the marriage. And if you're not, if you don't have dialogue about that ahead of time, you hit that roadblock and it could be really a, a difficult roadblock to, to um, navigate past. So, Definitely go to premarital counseling, and in premarital counseling, you'll know how to effectively communicate. You'll learn what respect looks like, what the um, how to manage your expectations of one another. Oh yeah, go to premarital counseling. All right. And if you're in marriage, and if you're married, and he's not submitted, go to marriage counseling. <laughs> I think. I, I think. I think even before uh, premarital counseling, like having those conversations early is like the best. I yeah. don't even know how me and Karan even got on it, but I think we talked about submission pretty early and hearing his perspective about it and me giving my perspective, like I'm able to see the fruit and everything that he is saying, how, how he wants his, how he wants to lead a family, especially if it's finances, because I, I see like his diligence with within his life in general you know me just being a girlfriend like i'm still able to see like how consistent he is i see how he works hard and he's trying to maintain financial security within himself because he knows his vision is like i have a family to take care of soon so having those conversations early and then paying attention to you know those behaviors like you're able to see the fruit in an individual's life by what he does on a day-to-day -day. it affects how he lives and his future so that would be my advice for but just the dating couples. Yeah, so true. Your advice is to get you a Quran? So oh, <laughs> Lord. Just kidding. That's nice, Quran. <laughs> just playing, just playing. Thank you, Tiffany. Kudos. Yeah. What you got to say? Get you a Tiffany. <laughs> <laughs> what answer? You can tell me it's all right. <laughs> Like, nah, um, nah, I would just say how the conversations early, early and often, like she said, like I said in the beginning, how I started, I'm gonna nip it in the butt kind of dude. So, like, I'm gonna just nip it in if there, are, which I it takes work, but and don't take me for an example, you know what I'm saying? Your balance is your balance, but there are conversations that you have that if you know that you can't work with it, it's really, in my opinion, no point in trying to build something there if you know that you know. That that's a deal breaker. Like Tiffany said, you got to know yourself. If they can communicate through that deal breaker, maybe they just didn't know how to articulate what they were saying. And through further communication, you found out it was 
that was a little bit different of an opinion, then maybe. But if you're standing hard, like, for example, if you're standing hard on the fact that you would never submit after I've explained to you what submission looks like and you've explained to me what submission looks like and it's still a hard no for you, then it's it's a pass for me. You know what I'm saying? And I think that we've communicated that early no matter how we got on the topic. Nobody knows because we were talking, still talk for four and five hours and six and seven hours and I'm sure we filled it up there somewhere with the topic of submission, but we agreed upon it without having to force the conversation and force the habits. Like, um, yeah, so we don't force, nobody's saying that you have to submit before a ring is on the finger or anything like that. We're just naturally moving in how we agree with how our relationships are moving. So that would be my tip is to nip it in the butt early and have the conversations often early <laughs> so that you can see if you agree with that person if, or if not. You know, articulate what you would want it to look like, like Tiffany said, her expectations of what a man looks like and my expectations of what a woman, how a woman operates inside of a relationship. Yeah, I think it's just really important to have a good understanding of what submission is. And I saw a good definition um, where the word submission was uh, broken down, sub meaning under, underneath. And mission, it, it means an important duty or a goal, assignment, a purpose. And so it's setting oneself under the boundaries of a stated, agreed upon mission, a purpose, and goals. And so together, two people come together and they submit under the mission that you all both talked about. And so I think when you look at it from that perspective, it becomes a whole lot easier to, yeah, to do. I'd agree. All right. Any final comments? This has been a good, good discussion and a good kickoff for our series on deal breakers. Any final comments? Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you for having us. Yes, thank you. All right, those of you who um, were on tonight, it's not too late to like and share. It's not too late to go over to my YouTube channel and subscribe. It's the Dr. Danita um, YouTube channel. Go ahead and subscribe. All of the lives will be uploaded to the YouTube channel. Thanks so much. Join us again next week. What's next week's? Next week's topic is um, mental is mental health. So type it in, somebody. What's next week's type it, to topic? And Real while y'all type it in, when in the meantime, if you if you're tapped into the to the um, Badness Plain Show, send us some suggestions of what you want to see on the types of platforms you want to see, the types of ways that we you know do the show. If you want to see more people on the show, more opinions, age groups, topics, send us your opinion on on what we're doing here and how you feel about it. All right. Um, next week's topic is the mental health topic. There you go. Yeah. Um, would you get into relationship with someone that might have a mental or... Oh, it's for better, for work. No, in sickness and in health. That's the topic. <laughs> there you go. In sickness and in health. That's next week. Would you... Is it a deal breaker to be in relationship with someone that may have a mental health issue or a physical mm. challenge? So you don't want to miss that one. We'll see you next week. All right. Thank you, Tiffany. Thank you, John. Thank you, Q. It was a great discussion. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. Having Thanks us. for having us.